Joining us tonight for the interview is the new chair of the Democratic National Committee, Florida Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Congresswoman Wasserman Schultz, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Rachel. Congratulations on your new gig. How's it going so far? It's going well. You know, we're off and running, and uh, we've got a lot of excitement that's being generated around the country. People are uh, getting fired up to reelect President Obama. We've been talking a lot about Republicans in control in the states. I just did a segment about uh, what Republican governance looks like in Florida uh, <laughs> these days in your home state. Do you expect that the Democratic Party this year in this election season will run in part by highlighting the way that Republicans are governing in the states where they have control, both in the House of Representatives, which they control, and in some of the states? Well, I think if you look at states like mine in Florida, Ohio, Wisconsin, that are being led by Republican governors, I think the voters there are becoming very disturbed about the extreme radical policies that are coming out of these state legislatures and out of these governors. Um, this is not what the voters signed up for, and th there is such a dramatic contrast being set up between the direction that the Republicans would take us, really right off the, the, the deep end, essentially uh, waging war on the unemployed, as if somehow them being out of a job is their fault, and rewarding businesses. Uh, to, really, it's like reverse Robin Hoodism. It's, it's, really, it's really shocking. And I think um, I think voters are really taken aback, and they're going to uh, they're going to push back hard when it comes to election day next year. On, on the issue of um, uh, or on, on social issues in your home state of Florida and the legislature there, Republicans have proposed 18 different anti-abortion bills. Yeah. Uh, this session. Plus, they uh, proposed and passed a variety of uh, state-mandated drug testing programs, drug testing that's for right. people who are not suspected of drug use, drug testing. Including for state employees, Rachel. Yeah, state employees, that's right, <laughs> and, and people no on public suspicion. assistance. No, you, you don't have to be suspected of that. Right. What are you hearing from your constituents in, in, in response to this year of big government conservatism in Florida? Well, again, I mean, Republicans uh, like to say how they want to end the concept of big government, yet they propose the most big government invasive proposals of all. I mean, to, to, to suggest that because you get paid a salary by the state, that somehow that gives the, that gives the state the right to randomly drug test you, whether or not there is any suspicion at all that you have, uh, that you have taken drugs. I mean, the Supreme Court has ruled on that. And so I'm, I'm sure that that, that is going to end up uh, going right to court, and Governor Scott's extreme radical proposals will be struck down. But uh, to, instead of focusing on job creation, instead of turning, trying to turn the economy around, in tra instead of trying to make sure that during this very difficult time, that we actually strike a balance, like President Obama has called for, and make sure that everyone absorbs a little bit of the pain so we can get through this crisis, know that they blame everything on people who are the most vulnerable. And uh, I think it's outrageous, and I think the voters are, are finding it outrageous as well. One of the real flashpoints in the states this year has been the issue of union rights. Uh, Governor yes. Scott Walker in Wisconsin getting the most attention, but a lot of states pursuing this now, stripping union rights. And the response from the union themselves has been interesting. They certainly feel supported by the Democratic base, by people out in the streets and at the state capitals lobbying against and arguing and cheering against these things. But groups like, I mean, Richard Trumka, the, the International Association yeah. of Firefighters, these groups are starting to say that they do not feel supported by the Democratic Party at the federal level, even as Republicans mount what's, a, what's starting to look like a coast-to-coast -coast assault on union rights. If the Democratic Party loses big labor support, it's going to be in trouble money-wise in the next election cycle. What's your view of that? Well, I, I think that uh, across the country, uh, you, you've had widespread grassroots and particularly Democratic support pushing back against these radical proposals that are anti-union and anti-worker. Um, I, I'm concerned if, uh, if the perception is by labor that uh, the Democrats aren't supportive. Uh, in fact, we were able to actually, in Florida, kill a really anti-labor proposal and prevent the Republicans from being able to push it through, even though Rick Scott strongly supported it, uh, because uh, this was something that was just unacceptable. We have collective bargaining rights in, embedded in Florida's Constitution, and it was a, just a, a bridge too far. So I, I think that Democrats have been very supportive. Democratic elected leaders and Democratic uh, activists have been very supportive of workers' rights and uh, 
for labor, the natural home uh, for, uh, for labor's, labor's members uh, is the Democratic Party. There's no question. Because I was hoping to get to talk to you now that you're the new chair of the party, I asked um, somebody who's sort of maybe my new friend, Michael Steele, uh, immediate <laughs> past chair of the Republican Party, whether he had any advice for you on starting this new job. Uh, oh, and he good. told me three things to tell you. He said, one, ha uh, have someone watch your back and then have someone watch them. Uh, two, <laughs> two, remember, you can't, please, two, you can't please everyone, but you, you can certainly tick them all off at the same time. <laughs> And um, three, have fun. Do you, do you accept his advice? Do you think that sounds appropriate for your new gig? I do. I'm going to start off with, uh, with, with advice number three uh, and, and definitely have fun uh, because there is nothing more exciting for me than working hard to elect Democrats up and down the ballot, particularly because I believe in President Obama's agenda uh, so strongly and the constituents that I represent in South Florida do as well. It's absolutely critical that we make sure that Americans know that we are focused like a laser beam on creating jobs, getting the economy turned around, making sure that we can fully implement health care reform so that patients are in the driver's seat and not insurance companies. And that's what I look forward to talking about with, with uh, voters across the country over the next 18 months. It's going to be incredibly important that we demonstrate the stark contrast between the two parties' vision for the direction that America should go. Florida and I'm going to have fun doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Democratic Party chair. And remember, have somebody watch your back and then have somebody watch that person. It's sort of <laughs> ominous, sure. All right. <laughs> Debbie Wasserman Schultz, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Rachel. We'll be right back.